I want to talk to Scott, who's calling in from Texas. Uh, Scott, let's 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 change pace in this conversation a little bit. How are you doing tonight, Scott? Hey, Scott. I'm good, guys. How are you guys? Doing all right. It's been heavy so far. It's been really crazy, but uh, <laughs> glad that we're here. What's going on? Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk about some experiences that I had uh, about 10 years ago that were kind of terrifying at the time, but actually helped me, I guess, towards being more of a skeptical uh, in the future. Um, so the story goes back to say about 10 years ago, when I lived in the UK, I used to live with a, uh, stay with a friend a lot in a, on a farm. And the barns that we used to stay in were converted into houses and stuff, but they were like 17th century. So there was loads of ghost stories surrounding the place. And um, I don't know, I didn't know what I believed at the time. I didn't really have any kind of God beliefs or anything, but I wasn't really a skeptic either. But every time I stayed in the guest room in this uh, barn, about 50% of the time I'd have these like awful experiences where I'd wake up in the middle of the night feeling someone was there and like leaning over me and pushing me down and I couldn't say anything or do anything or open my eyes and, you know, eventually it would, it would kind of pass. And it kind of happened so much staying in that room i just got so used to it that i would just kind of let it pass and i wasn't as scared as i was but every time i asked the owner of the house they were like oh yeah yeah that room's just haunted don't worry about it you know and i was like <laughs> okay and i didn't really ask any more questions about it until like about five years ago i picked up a book um by guy p harrison called uh, 50 popular beliefs that people think are true and i started delving into it and I got to the bit about alien abduction and suddenly people are talking about alien abduction like they were, like I had this experience. And then it started talking about sleep paralysis and suddenly yep. it's like a light went on. I was like, oh my God, like, I, like but I'd never heard of it before. And mm. then suddenly I'm like, oh my, like this was just, That's... it was completely, this made so much more sense yeah. <laughs> even considering that it was a ghostly experience. Yeah, uh, that, that makes sense, right? Yeah, you found an explanation that was better suited for what you experience than a ghost explanation or a demon explanation. That's great. That, that's the light that went off in my head when you started to talk about it. I'm like sleep paralysis, maybe, yeah. or maybe you're, yeah, uh, is I it know, happening I, only when you're staying in this now, place? But... So are you eating a curry before going to bed and that's making you have those things? I... <laughs> Well, that's, I kind of feel silly about it because I guess I didn't know about sleep paralysis and still really until I really dived into the skeptical stuff. So it wasn't like I, I was going around with this big right. ghost belief where I'd go out and hunt ghosts. I just didn't question it, which was really mm. weird. Um, so when, yeah, when I learned about sleep paralysis and then I realized, I think what the contributing factor was, was every time I stayed at this place, we were doing really long road trips to get there, like seven, eight hours. And I think I was just like going to sleep Exhausted. before letting yeah. my body relax. And then it was this kind of mismatch of my mind not catching up with my body going to sleep. But I just, I think the important, like what I really learned from it, and this only happened four or five, oh, about five years ago, I picked up this book. Because I always saw myself as an atheist. Well, I guess I just never believed in a God. I don't think I ever called myself an atheist, but I had um, all these other beliefs that I guess I didn't think were related. Like, you know, I, I didn't believe in a God, but I'd use homeopathic remedies and I'd do all this kind of stuff. And I never thought they were really kind of related. And now, like, from, you know, watching you guys and watching the experience, I just realize now how much I question. <laughs> and, uh, you know, again, just all these dominoes are starting to fall. Yeah. Like, oh, wow, okay, this may not be real either. Isn't it interesting? I think it happens because when we see other people and we're like, oh, well, I think this person's kind of smart and, and they're kind of skeptical of this thing. What else are they skeptical of? And and that's where like the kind of skeptic kind of community comes into play where it's like, yeah, here's a bunch of shit we don't believe in, which is kind of <laughs> kind of interesting. Like, yeah, that's not really a thing anywhere else except, so, you know, where we with you with you moving to Texas, you haven't found God yet. Have, have they not? indoctrinated you into god yet? yeah you, oh bless know. your heart I think, <laughs> I, th I think if anything it's made me definitely more kind of away from it you know like when it's in your, <laughs> in your face so much um it, it, it wasn't i didn't feel like that in in england i don't know if anyone else from the uk would disagree with me but i feel like most of my friends you never even spoke about god like a few went to sunday school maybe a couple went to church but there was never like this constant thing that you had to battle against mm. or argue about it was just it was kind of there no. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know where you live in Texas, Scott, but uh, but I'm sure your experience has probably been a bit different here, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a tiny bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, I'm, I'm San Antonio, so, you know, it, okay. it's you know, a mixed bag here as well, but, like, it's not too bad. But, yeah, it's just, it was it was very different over there. So when I got over here to the USA, I was like, oh, wow, this is, like, a really big thing. And, you know, I've got a lot of friends here that are, that are very heavily religious, not just, you know, religious like they were back home, like, very, every, it guides their whole life, and it was very difficult to kind of, you know, 
I don't know, get into that, but yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, I, it's a, it is funny because obviously I have friends in other countries and places and, and, and they say the same thing as you, Scott. It's like, oh yeah, like religion's not even like a thing here. You know, like we don't even really talk about it. Like, yeah, maybe somebody believes in God, but like, that's about the extent of it. Whereas if you come down to ground these parts, well, <laughs> my son, if, if you, don't, you ain't going to church, then something's wrong with you. You know, you gotta have something in your life. You know, what, what what's going on? You know, it, it's always like, and like, yeah, San Antonio, you know, I mean, you know, fairly, I mean, it's a city, so there's going to be a lot of progressive people there, but there's still a lot of religious folks. I mean, I used to live there a couple <laughs> of years, and uh, I mean, that's going to be anywhere you go in Texas, even here in Austin, you, you'll find it, although less to to a degree less so than other cities here. But um, yeah, it's a difference in culture for sure, for sure. Yeah, Utah's yeah, uh, pretty I, I passive aggressive when it comes to beliefs around here. They hmm. people aren't going to go. I mean, unless you're they're a holes, they're not going to go around asking what your beliefs are and stuff. Yeah. Uh, except when they are confronted by staunch atheists or people like me that consider ourselves uh, consider myself a Satanist, they're just like, oh my god! <laughs> it's still like a great freak out moment for a lot of things. And it's like, hang on, let me tell you what that means before you get any ideas in your head. Mm. Oh, it's always fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, most of my friends here, are, I have a, a Christian or part of the Catholic um, community, and they're, they're already, none of them, you know, really talk about it or try and, you know, talk to me about it. They're just, you yeah. know, it's absolutely fine, and that's why it works. But, you know, I think, I mean, I'm, I I let them know I'm an atheist, just, you know, but I don't also, you know, make them sit down and listen to anything about it or anything like that, and it works just fine, you know? So. <laughs> Yeah. Let me evangelize to you. <laughs> Payback's a bitch. <laughs> that is a. I will tell you this in my personal life, Scott. This has been a weird issue for me because obviously, you know, I have this show. So it's like, as soon as I, if I get to know somebody new and it's like, and, and that comes up, it's like, well, I not only do I have a lot of thoughts about it, like, I, I people on the internet listen to it sometimes <laughs> for some reason. So it's like, oh, yeah, that's kind yeah. of a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a feather in my cap, you know, it's kind of a thing, but, um, I'm popular. It, on the internet do you know what? yeah I, can I, I can go ahead it's great what you're doing i'm actually i'm in the entertainment business as, as well and i'd love to be able to do more stuff like that but i just i i guess i just haven't got the guts that you guys have to actually oh. uh bring that kind of stuff up within my you know uh performances and things like that you know because i know that by doing it i will alienate people and i don't know you guys have had to yeah. Well, and just that. use a different name, <laughs> and uh, you know that's that's all you need. Outcast X, yeah, not his birth name. No, uh, because it, because I I have a professional <laughs> career where I do very well at that, and that's not what I I don't ne never should the two streams cross. You yeah. know, don't cross the streams because I have professional me, and then I have internet me, and internet me is a whole lot of fun, but professional me likes to get a paycheck every two. Weeks. Yeah. So. I say, Scott, <laughs> right, if you got yeah. the experience, hey, don't let don't let uh, don't let a fear of reprise of your opinions hold you back. There's a lot of ways around that you can do it. And even if it's not your I mean, there's a lot of volunteers here at the ACA that have those that like to help out, but don't want to be in front of the camera for the exact same reasons. And so they find other ways to do it. There's always going to be ways to do it. And that's just not just for you, Scott. That's for anybody who has an interest in like wanting to make their voices heard. Hey, yep. contact some folks here at the ACA. If we don't help, if we don't need any help here, I mean, th th there's people that can give you advice. Like we always want to encourage more voices in this community because that's important. It's good that we speak out. The re like, like th uh, the opinions in this country would be so much different if there were more people who weren't, you know, scared of speaking out. I right. honestly believe that. I honestly and think that if the social fear of being an atheist wasn't there if that stigma wasn't there we would have so much more progress in this country um in talking about it. but like that's that's why we yeah, try to I, break I, it I down think, sorry dan I, yeah. I i don't think it's so much the fear of obviously i tell anyone that i know that i'm an atheist it doesn't bother me too much i, I guess it's like uh, what i said like when i put it into my professional life yeah the right. of it. yeah alienate my business you know yeah so you don't it, want to tell your boss you think that their religion's full of shit Right. So if, if, yeah. Here's my suggestion. If, if you're going to do that, go by a pseudonym, mm -hmm. make yourself an avatar. There's tons of people that have just avatars online. If you're going to make just podcast, if you don't want to be on video, do podcasting. Podcasting is still one of the fastest growing ways of people getting their messages out there. Hell, I listen to 20 hours of them a week, at least, you know, I I've got no life in either, but besides the job, but, uh, the thing is, like, if you have a drive and you want to, if, if you said you're an entertainer, right? So if you're into enter entertaining people, 
there's a need for you to do this stuff. Hell yeah. And so what I suggest to anybody that ever expresses any kind of interest in being a content creator, whether it be podcasting, videos, uh, TikToks, whatever it is, start now. Your, your first stuff is going to suck. Don't wait for you to like have all the right equipment you need. Don't wait for you to uh, find a good time to do it and fit it into your schedule. Sit down in front of something that can record audio or video and just do some stuff, you know, just just state your opinion on a news art uh, news thing that you read. Your audience is out there waiting for you. You just don't know it yet. So hell yeah. I like that. I like that. Scott, Great. thanks so much for calling in. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, have a good one and uh, appreciate your call. As always, you know, he was talking about the ghost stuff. Uh, and, I love, um, I love ghost I, stuff. here's the thing. OK, so <laughs> I've been hanging out with genetically modified skip this week. He and his wife, we've, we we have this thing now where uh, I guess the three of us were, well, they, they were already doing it before, but I've joined in now, where <laughs> they will watch Ghost Adventures together, and we just kind of talk about it, I guess. We've been having these Ghost Adventures nights, and oh my goodness, Ghost Adventures on the Travel <laughs> Channel, host star with uh, Zach Baggins, all right? Best thing ever. So let me tell you what we watched just last night. They were at uh, this old hospital. And in order to capture footage for this ghost, they use an Xbox Connect camera, <laughs> an Xbox Connect camera. And according to Zach, Zach said that it's one of the best cameras out there for doing this because it's so accurate with its facial recognition and body recognition that you can actually pick up ghosts. The, the infrared <laughs> dot sensor. The inf <laughs> yes, the dots can pick up ghosts, X. Feel like and, it has to reflect <laughs> off of something, you dumbass. <laughs> in the episode, there's like it, it, it picks up this body or, or something on the side, and it was right when this guy got hurt on the you know on the side of his body. So it must have been a doctor working on him. It's like, I, have you guys ever worked with a connect before? Have you guys ever tried to play a that connect never game? Worked. Shit never does worked. not fucking work. I don't think it's picking up on ghosts. <laughs> unless it's that bad of a system that I can't pick up on living people, but can only pick up on ghosts. But I mean, it can I get know. the ghosts. And any the anytime these people do the whole, well, we have audio of something here, and we're going to edit this audio until we can hear something that's audible. It's like, yeah, that's not how that's not how audio recording <laughs> works. Listen. And then when they finally get something, they're like, "Did you hear that? Did you hear what it said?" And you're all you hear is. Oh, is that and they're like, th that means th that person just said, I want to kill you. And then your brain goes, oh, OK, now that's all I'm going to hear whenever I hear that wow. thing repeated. And it's like, they, damn it. <laughs> they just have the latest and greatest ghost hunting technology out there. Oh, and we're man. not even we're there's streets ahead. All right. We need to start filming this show with a connect camera or I need to start setting up my apartment with connect cameras everywhere. So that we can have the best ghost footage possible. We're willing to. This is a Patreon goal, guys. Patre if, if everybody donates today, we can make this happen as part of our, you know, eventual ghost investigation. Or we, or we do this. We need to get Zach Baggins on the show. Everybody on Twitter, at Zach Baggins. I don't know what he is on Twitter. But let's talk to him on Truth Wanted. I want to know. What makes the connect so good at picking up ghosts? Because my I was I was losing it. I was absolutely losing it. I could not believe what I was seeing. But see, and if it was if it was just a matter of them having fun and wanting to like play pretend that they're finding these things, and that that's fine. Because I I have a next door neighbor that goes sasquatching. He literally goes to the mountains and hunts for Bigfoot with his family i view it as them having an excuse to go camping you know yeah you know something they could do but at the same time it's like really do you really believe this i don't know or Listen, are you just having fun travel channel come on come pick up your boy let's make truth wanted a show that's all i'm saying if you can put ghost adventures on there you can have a budget for us did I, you hear that did you hear that whoa, did you hear that guys whoa crazy I'm, my pants are getting warm all of a sudden, and there's all this liquid now showing up. Oh, my God. I, all I'm saying was I was just losing it. That's Ghost Adventures.